goal is to do three problems. That's it, three. Uh, I'm gonna start with the easiest one and kind of work our way to the more challenging one, if that makes any sense. Yesterday I went backwards. Let's start with the easy. Uh, your homework today um, that you're gonna get, because I did promise you we're gonna get an assignment today, I know it seems crazy. Uh, it'll be nine problems that'll be due at the end of the week. It'll do be on Friday. Okay, so you'll need a little bit of time, so I'm going to give you a couple things to work on. Um, but it'll be due on Friday. It's a worksheet, so it's not out of your book. It's kind of one of those things I like to throw worksheets every now and then. Um, so um, hopefully you get a little bit of a change of pace. It's not so many problems. It's nine total problems. I know these take a while, so I'm going to give you a couple days to kind of work on it. Um, but let's start with the easy one. So uh, this is going to be the uh, division or multiplication problem. Division or multiplication. So this is the one we finished with yesterday that I said, you know, multiplication on rational expressions, that's the section we're in. We're in section uh, P.8, which is rational expressions, wow. rational functions. So, okay. Uh, but we're going to do three problems today um, in the notes, and then you are going to get an assignment. It'll be due on the end of the week, so it'll be due on Friday. So. It's nine pounds, it'll be a worksheet, so. Okay, all right, um, so uh, let's let's discuss this easy problem, the first easy one here. Um, okay, this is based on multiply, multiplying or division, so I'll start with this first, and we'll talk about it. X squared minus one, and X squared plus five X plus six, okay. This will be our first one. I consider this the easy problem. Easy one out of the three that we're going to do for our notes today. Now, it's a division problem. So what, what do you remember as the rules from yesterday? What was the rule for division? you got to flip the second one. The second fraction is going to flip. You only do this for division. So if it's a multiplication problem, you would not do this rule. If it's division, you have to. You change this to multiplication, right? Because we don't actually divide fractions. It's incorrect mathematics to do that. So we multiply by the reciprocal, and you're absolutely right, the second fraction is going to flip over. That is called a reciprocal. Reciprocal is when you flip something over. The second fraction, the, the fractions after the division sign will flip, and it becomes a multi multiplication problem. The first fraction will not change. So that one's going to stay exactly the same way that you found it, only the one after. Okay. All right, does everyone understand the first step? You switch to the division sign, multiply, and then you flip it. Now, if it was just straight up multiplication, let's say this is your problem, so ignore that. Let's say that was your problem. It just stays. So if it's multiplying, it would just stay where it's at. I'll let you get caught up. Sorry, I'm going a little fast. Sorry. And to write it pretty quick. what we have to do on these problems. You have to factor. Now, on multiplying or division problems, you have to factor everything. Top, bottom, right, left, everything. So we, we need to kind of go through all the rules. Common factors, trinomials, difference of squares, cube rules, grouping, whatever you have. So let's start in like the upper left corner. Now, I'm going to take this problem and put it over here just so you can see what we're doing here. So this is going to be the upper left corner. That'll be this one right here. Okay. How do we factor this thing apart? What, what's the rule we're going to follow? Common factor. Common factor, yeah. This isn't a difference of squares, it's not a cube rule, it's not a trinomial. It's just a common factor. They both have x's. I'm going to factor an x out. So if I take an x out of both items, like dividing an x out, what's left if I took an x from these? x plus 1. x plus 1. Nice. Yeah, because the item that, that's in the parentheses has to be the same size as what you started with. Right? We started with a binomial. It better be a binomial in that parenthesis. That was good. A lot of people forget the one. Okay, on the bottom, the bottom left corner, this thing right here, how do we factor that item? Yeah, difference of squares. And I kind of already heard somebody saying it. X plus 2, X minus 2. That's a difference of squares, plus minus, X and X, 2 and 2. All right, that makes the 4. Difference of squares, I think, is probably one of the easiest rules we have. This is just plus minus, you just break the things evenly, as best you can. 
Again, they have to multiply, so. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Sorry, going a little fast. Questions up to this point? Factoring or different squares, or just weird things. I know we, we used to practice all last weekend this factoring, so hopefully that's not the part holding me back a little bit. You just gotta remember the rules now. Good, okay. Upper right corner, this one. Right corner. Trinomial. trinomial rule. So trinomial is going to be two parentheses. Um, now the symbols in each parenthesis. What plus signs? Plus and plus. They're both the same. They're both pluses. We're going to break up the x squared. Well, x and x. So I'll go in the fronts. Right. And now we have to break up the six in the back. Numbers of multiply, give me six. Two and three. Two and three. Okay. And that'll make the five in the middle, so that's pretty good. Two and three. Multiplies give you six. Okay, we're good on that upper right corner. What about lower lower right? Oh no. That's it? It's different squares. So uh, it's different squares, they're perfect squares. Two parentheses, plus minus, uh, x and x and one and one. Very nice. Okay. Sorry, I go a little fast. That was good. Thank you for all the volunteers and all your things. Very nicely done. Questions up to this point? I consider these easy problems. Maybe that pangs you a little bit. I hope it doesn't. It just it comes out of factoring. That's why I spent so much time doing it. This is crucial for the next steps we're going to take in this first chapter, graphing polynomials, random polynomials. So we have to get to this point where we can do this stuff just by instance. All right, so now we're to this point on multiplica multiplication, right? We're here. Uh, we don't need to flip anything. We've factored everything apart. Now you can start to cancel stuff out. Top, bottom, right, left, however you want to do it. So I'm going to go up and down. Is there anything I can cancel up and down? Here or there? Okay, um, so right now, um, up and down I can't, but diagonally, what can I cancel? X plus two. X, X plus one. Yeah, X plus twos, X plus ones. Yeah, so the diagonals, I can do those. So up and down, I'm talking about like its own fraction bar, and then diagonally, yeah, you can go diagonals and cancel those out. And then your final answer is just multiplying everything across with what, what you're left with. So my final answer on this problem is going to be an x, um, an x plus 3 on the top. I think those are the only things that are left. And on the bottom, we have a, what, an x minus 2, an x minus 1. And that would be your final answer. You can leave it just like that. You don't need to foil it out or multiply it or anything like that. Questions? Now, OK, I know some of you are getting caught up writing that all down. Just remember, the only time you flip something, like I did here where I flip, is only when it's division. The second fraction would flip. If this was the start of your problem, let's say this was problem number 10, and this is your problem, well then you just leave it and you just go right to factoring. Okay, you only flip it when it's a division problem. And only the second fraction flips over. Okay, questions on the first ones. You're gonna have four of those on the worksheet today. Four. Okay? So you'll have to know every type of factoring. I think the only type of factoring I don't include was grouping on that first one four problems. I think everything else was accounted for. I think. I'll have to look back and look at it. Okay. Questions? Okay. Let's go to the next one. Now, that, now we're getting a little more difficult. Go to the second type of problem now. Again, this is still this that section P.8. It's still on, you know, it's on rationalizing. I consider this a part of chapter one. You have to be able to do this stuff for chapter one. Okay. So now we're going to be talking about is some and or differences. So add or subtract. I think that's what I say on the worksheet. I don't even use these fancy terms. I just say add or subtract as indicated. All right, so now this problem got a little more difficult. Okay. I'm going to pick a problem that looks really close to what you have in your worksheet. This looks like one of them. It's a plus, it's addition. We're adding these two together. Now this would be the same rule if you add or subtract, we'll follow the same pattern. All right, 
before you start, do they have the same denominator before you start? The bottoms. No. no. If they did, you could just add the top. You wouldn't even have to wait. Like if they had the exact same denominators, just add the top straight across and leave the bottom alone. And just write the bottom whatever it was. Okay? You don't need to add the bottoms. You just leave it to whatever the common denominator was. But on mine, they're definitely different. You can see that thing and that thing are not the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor the bottoms apart. You only do this if the denominators are different. Okay, So I'm going to factor this apart. So this top, I can't factor it. This top over here, I can't factor it. don't care about that. But this bottom left corner, how do I factor? What's the rule? Trinomial. Trinomial, yeah. So it's two parentheses. It's going to be what? Plus and plus. X and X. What? Three and three to make the nine? Makes the six in the middle? Pretty nice. Pretty nice and easy. And over here we have an X plus three. Only one of them. So far, it's good. Okay. All right. So now we got to keep continuing. So now we're going to try to add these two fractions together, right? So to, to add, you have to have the same denominator, right? It's not like multiplying or dividing. You can multiply and divide anything you want. But on, but on an addition problem, they have to have the same denominator. So this one has two x plus threes. That one only has one. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to I'm going to multiply an extra one over here. That way they have the same denominators. I have an extra x plus 3 on that one. Now, if I did it to the bottom, what do I also have to do? Do it to the top. To the top. So if you multiply by something new, you have to multiply it to the top. That was something I did yesterday. right? Whatever the new item was, I had to multiply it. Maybe you have to like look at both, and you're going to multiply this thing by something and this by something else. right? Because you've got to make the two bottoms the same. Well, this one was kind of easy. Okay, are we good so far? Now, do we agree the denominators are the same? They're good now? Now we can add straight across. So when you add straight across, here's what you get. You're going to add straight across. You're going to add the tops like this. The denominator will not change. When you add fractions, the denominator will stay whatever it was matched up with. That was the common denominator, x plus 3 and x plus 3. So I added the tops. That's how you add fractions. Now, to factor this or to do the, the finish this problem out, there's two ways to do it. I don't know how you want to attempt this. So one way you can do this, you can foil the top together. The bottom, just leave the bottom alone. Don't even worry about the bottom. You could foil the top. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe that's easy for you. You can do that. So you want to multiply this four through this parenthesis and then just add the like terms. You can do that. In fact, I'm going to do that right now just so you can see this. So I'm going to multiply that four through. That's four X plus 12. When I multiply that together, right? Because you had to multiply that four all the way through that parenthesis. It was attached to the parenthesis. And now I can add like terms, which would be, so again, how I did that, just taking this four times everything here. I had to foil it, distribute it. So what do I get when I add the tops together? 4x plus 16. 4x plus 16. Okay, good. 4x plus 16. x plus 3. x plus 3. And again, if, if this side you had to foil something over here together, fine, foil that, and then add like terms, you can do that. But what will happen if you do these correctly, they're going to be able to factor apart. The top should be factorable in the very end. Like, what do you notice that in the very end, if you did it all the way like I did, what do you notice the top can factor out into? What type of factoring? Not a difference of squares, but common factor, yeah. So it's a common factor. Uh, we have, I can pull out a four. So it's four, it's x plus four when I pull that out. There is another way to do that. I just think for most people, I think this is probably the way you want to go. Just foil it and kind of add like terms and then, then you'll be able to factor it in the long run. The reason why I factored it back out again, I know that seems weird, like I added like terms and then I got, and then I factored it again, is because I need to see if I can cancel anything more at the very end. Look top and bottom, is there anything more I can cancel? No, there's not, so then I just move on to the next problem. 
Now, I could have done this problem differently, and I can show you that. Um, it would have been right here, how I can do this. I, I, you could have recognized this could have been by grouping. I could have factored out fours. These, both this left and the right item both have fours. Just, I think for most people, it's just too difficult to see that, so I would just recommend foil, give it down, and then factor it out later. Common factor, trinomial, or difference of squares, whatever it is. You just have to recognize what type of factoring you're doing. All right, questions up till now. Okay, I consider that a difficult problem. The reason why, now you're thinking more of that stuff I heard, it wouldn't be if you have to really pick and choose kind of what things you need. Because then this side would be something, this side would be something, and then you gotta you know, foil and get the tops to work out. The bottom didn't really change. You just figure out what the denominator was and it never changes again. All right, is there any questions about the sum or difference, or if you need to see another one, or if you need to see another multi multiplication or division problem? Okay, I only have one last problem today. It's more of a challenge question, but I just want you to see one. Okay. This is, there's only one of these. So out of all nine problems, there's only one of these on your worksheet. It's, it's a problem that all the instructions say is to simplify. It's all it said in the textbook. Simplify the following. Okay. So what do they give you? All right. So let's talk about what what's provided. complex. It is fractions over fractions over fractions. And it looks nasty. Okay, there's an easy way to do this problem. There's a difficult way to do this problem. I'm going to only show you the easy way. So I think it's the best way to do it and it will be the most clean. To simplify this problem down as far as you can, as fast as you can, um, what I choose to do is to multiply by the common denominator. That is very different than what other textbooks would t teach you. They would teach you to like add the fractions together, then do a reciprocal. So it's like an addition problem and then a division problem all in one. That's yeah, really hard. I'm not going to do that. So um, here's how I do it. Um, if there's anything that you can factor, I would factor things apart. Like down here, can I factor this apart? It's a difference of squares, right? So I'm going to factor this. I'm going to erase it, sorry. Uh, x squared minus 4 is the same thing as x plus 2, x minus 2, right? So I'm just going to factor this up right here. So it's x plus 2, x minus 2. It's a difference of squares. Sorry, I just factored it right there, sorry. I just think this is the easiest way to show you how to do this. All right. Now, we, on this problem, this has three different fractions. There's the upper, I'm going to try to color code. Okay, we have the upper right corner and upper left corner, right, in no particular order. We have those two fractions. And we have that bottom fraction on, on, on the bottom here, this one. So this problem only has three fractions. Sometimes your problems could have four, okay, depending if they're adding, subtracting multiple fractions together. Okay, what is the common denominator between all three fractions? What should all three have if you want to make all the denominators the same? What should all of them have? X plus two or X minus two. Exactly. An X plus two and an X minus two. Does everyone see that? That would make all the denominators the same. Now, to save you time, question. Sorry. Is there a question? Oh, no. Oh, okay, sorry. Your hand is up. I'm not going to the question. All right, so, Amy. To save you time, here's what I'm going to tell you to do. This is my shortcut. You're going to multiply every fraction, all three of those fractions, by this. We're going to multiply by it. Now what I mean by that, when you multiply by that item there, that common denominator, in air quotes, 
you're going to multiply to the top of every fraction. Okay? It will multiply to the top. Now you're thinking, well, how does that work? Here's how it works. Now I'm going to show you, but I do not want you to write those down. So this is how it works. I'm technically multiplying by the number 1. So if I multiply by 1, this fraction stays the same. But instead of 1, I choose to do 1 over 1. And instead of 1 over 1, I choose to do that common denominator and the common denominator. Right? x plus 2, x minus 2, x plus 2, x minus 2. And when you do this, you have to FOIL it to everything. You have to distribute. That's what it's going to do. So that's the easiest way. So multiplying by 1. So it's a multiplicative identity if you're into your property names. So when I multiply this mess to the first fraction, it will go to the top. So I'm going to write this, and you don't need to because we should be able to simplify this if you do this correctly. So if I'm multiplying this mess to this top left fraction, and it's multiplying to the top, x plus 2, x minus 2, times the 3, right? What will happen on that first fraction if I were to multiply that mess to the top? The x minus 2 cancels. Yes, that's canceled, and you don't have a fraction anymore. Super nice. Okay. So what I'm going to be left with is a 3 and an x plus 2 in that upper left corner. Does that make sense now? Okay, now if I did the same thing, I'm going to multiply this thing right here to the upper right corner. I'm going to try to keep these color coded so you can see this. So this mass is being multiplied to the upper right corner. This 4 over the x plus 2. But it's getting multiplied to the top. x plus 2, x minus 2. What will happen to that fraction? X plus 2 will cancel. Yeah, those are gone. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm left with a minus sign, right? The minus sign is still there. I'm left with a 4 and an X minus 2 on the top of your fraction. No fractions. Make sense so far? Okay, we're doing well. Last one. Now I'm going to multiply to the bottom. I'm going to multiply this mess to the bottom fraction. So it'll multiply to the it'll multiply to the top. So x plus 2, x minus 2. If I multiply that to the top, what happens to that bottom fraction? It disappears. Yeah. These are gone, that's gone, and I'm left with just a 7. Now it's not complex anymore. And it's a normal fraction. And it's really quick. But you have to recognize what the common denominator was for everything. And that's what makes this work. If you don't do it my way, <laughs> you have to get common denominators, add the two together, get whatever that is, like you've been doing earlier. Then you have to take this and do a reciprocal and multiply it to the top. It's really hard. It's like mixing addition and a multiplication problem on the one. And I don't want to do that. Question so far? Now, how do I finish that problem out? What do you think I have to do next? Let me roll down. Sorry. Okay, you can probably hardly even read that. There, there you go. Is that better? You can see that. Right. What do I have to do last? What do you think? Because I'm not finished yet. It's close. Distribute. Yeah, distribute. So I have to distribute the top. So this is going to be a 3x plus 6 and a negative 4x plus 8. So you have to distribute the negative 4 to the back parenthesis, so negative 4 and negative 4. Right, it makes a positive 8 in the back. And you still have the 7 on the bottom. And then I'm going to combine like terms. Right, so I'll combine the 3x and the negative 4. I'll combine the 8 and the, uh, this, the, uh, the 8 and the 6. And I can put these in any order I want. I'm going to end up with 14 minus a 1x. And there's a 7 on the bottom. And I don't care which order you put those in. Maybe I want to write negative 1x plus 14. Cool, you do you. Questions? That's it. Done. Okay, here's your, uh, here's your homework this week. Um, it's going to be due at the end of the week. Nine problems, it's due on Friday. It's your one and only pretty much assignment this week.
So um, first page, if you're looking at it, um, has your name on it, make sure you put your name on there. Um, first page is just all multiplying and dividing. So just make sure if there's a division problem, flip a fraction over, factor it, you know, cancel things out, top, bottom, right, you know, kitty corner, and then go straight across once whatever's left, and you can leave the final answer like that. The second page, you're gonna be adding and subtracting fractions together, get common denominators. You know, add or subtract across after you change the tops. And then the very last problem was the, what they call the simplifying problem, which is a complex fraction. I added the directions a little bit in there. I changed the directions, so it says simplify the complex, you know, expression, rational expression. Because they just said simplify. It's not really explanatory what you need to do. But the, what you're seeing up here on the board, this is my shortcut. It's the way that I do it. Very different than the way that the books would teach you. So I think it's a lot easier if you do it my way.